gives me great pleasure to initiate this first broadcast from Yorkshire Television's new studios in Leeds. The Duchess of Kent throws the switch and Yorkshire Television goes on air for the very first time. The first programme, an Ashes Test match between England and Australia, live from round the corner in Headingley. Well, good morning to you from the Test match, where, as you've just heard, you've missed practically nothing. It had been quite a journey to get to transmission day. August 5th, 1967. Surveyors storm waist deep through a sea of purple flowers. The Kirksaw Road leads. Once this was a patch of wasteland, half a mile from the city centre. Now there is to be a giant television studio, the most modern colour television centre in Europe. A skeleton like the rib cage of a prehistoric animal. The architects have made 519 drawings to guide the 200 construction workers. Television centre was still being completed when the first homegrown programme went on air. Good evening, and as I was saying on the opening night 50 years ago, welcome to Calendar. The build-up was pretty chaotic. First of all, the building wasn't ready, the equipment wasn't ready. We had to deliver the first programme or two, not sitting down in comfortable chairs and sofas as people always do on television, but standing up. It was, of course, Calendar, hosted by Jonathan Aitken, who went on to become a notorious MP. The worst thing on the first night was the uh, equipment wasn't working properly and kept cutting out. So, for example, the um, prompter, I always remember it, it started to go forward and then the person operating on it was new. And suddenly the sort of script went backwards. It was a bumpy ride. Uh, and um, I think Calendar took a bit of time to uh, settle down. The great difficulty was finding a good Yorkshire presenter. Uh, no one was keener than me to replace myself. Uh, and we found him in the end in New Zealand, where this Yorkshireman with a Yorkshire accent was presenting programmes in an obscure New Zealand station. I've been challenged by a member of the Leeds and Bradford Freefall Parachute Club to do a parachute jump, which is just what I'm going to do now. Here we go, feet together, ready for the impact. Curl up! His name was Austin Mitchell. It's always exciting to form something new. It was marvellous. And that team included several I can only call them television geniuses, there was Sid Waddell, who was a marvellous man of ideas and gave us the pub league. Deadly finishing from the school teacher from Durham. It's them top beds that sorts out the champs. Reigning champ Alan Brown, also Durham, I'd better look out for that Turner touch. Don't you touch the off button. We'll be back in a tick. It was our job to promote Yorkshire. There's nothing people of Yorkshire are more interested in than Yorkshire. Uh, and we entertained them with it. We put its demands. We raised its problems. Uh, and we gave it a voice. And I think that was the great achievement. Life was exciting. For me, it was marvellous. I enjoyed it no end. There were only three Yorkshiremen on calendar at the very beginning, and one went on to really become Mr Yorkshire. And every day during the summer they come out and painstakingly go through the clover patch to reap that day's harvest. Richard was a, a real enthusiast for television. He just loved it. And grew to the job, he became Mr Yorkshire and Ivanka the present, uh, pres presence. So, uh, Richard was uh, a natural television personality and a natural enthusiast. Every Yorkshireman knows that he lives in one of the prettiest counties in England and every year thousands of people come here to look at the dales, the national parks, the wolds and the quaint old market towns. Um, my recollection of the early nights in calendar is that he was actually doing the weather uh, and he was as obscure as they come. But Richard Whiteley had a very special personality. 
and that started to shine through. I mean, he made jokes about the weather, and he very quickly rose to becoming a fairly humble, still reporter. Um, but he was a delight, Richard White. He had a personality. I adored him. He was a character with a capital C, and great fun off screen and great fun on screen. So he rightly became a legend. Another Yorkshire broadcasting legend was heard but not seen on that very first night. Any Yorkshireman worth his salt will tell you that the county embraces more acres than there are words in the Bible, nearly four million. It was the station's first ever documentary, named what else but Made in Yorkshire. It was an offer I could not refuse, I have to tell you, particularly as it came from my old boss at BBC, Don Baverstock. His only instruction to me was, boy, all right about your, your county, but remember, lots of brass bands. To a Yorkshireman, a brass band is as important as a bagpipe to a Scotsman. It's not everyone's idea of music, but the natives love it. It was a very worthwhile job to do because it prospered from that grainy little film featuring lots of brass band music. The company developed into a major force in British television, and uh, it should be proud of what it achieved. And there's always been within Yorkshire itself a kind of a, a need for expression, uh, whether it be music or whether it be through cricket or whatever it might be. All the cliches about Yorkshire are true, you know, and we take everything very seriously here. And we waited a long time for something like Yorkshire television to come along. We were forgotten for, for a long time. And, and, and somehow we needed that to boost us, to bring us back into public recognition. And we took the chance. I mean, it's as simple as that. I thought I'd just ask everybody who started in the first year of Yorkshire television to stand up and we'll give you a quick round of applause. <laughs> The 50th anniversary of the creation of YTV and Calendar has already been marked by the original staff who brought you all those famous shows over five decades. And this lot were all there on day one. It was an adventure. It was something you would have done as a hobby, as opposed to work. It was like, to me, it was like being a footballer, a cricketer, a rugby player. It was also one big family, wasn't it? it? Oh, yes, you yeah. Yeah. definitely. Mean, we, we all yeah. worked as a team. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I remember the very first Emmerdale farm we actually did. In fact, obviously, I remember most of the very first programmes we ever did. I joined the sound department as a trainee and worked my way up to, to the top. And, yes. Uh, yeah. We had a great time in the sound department. Happy birthday, Yorkshire Television! Also there on day one, but with his back to camera at the opening ceremony, was none other than the broadcasting legend Alan Wicker. Crouching behind his tanks in his fortress, the palace Haitian exiles tried to bomb before one of their abortive invasions, the palace many fear to enter. Papa Doc receives no one for months. Wicker had been tempted from the BBC to be part of the launch team and put Yorkshire television on the map around the world. He has agreed to see me. The great Wicker. One of the great TV journalists. We all learn so much from this man. He was brilliant. People forget he was a wonderful journalist, first of all, a great storyteller. So long as they let him do what he wanted to do, which is tour the world and, and do all, all, all these exotic places, Wicker's world, then, you know, he, 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 he'd do it. He was, he was a journalist, he was a working journalist. And so long as it wasn't a, a, a dud TV station, or Yorkshire was far from that, he was happy. 50 years of broadcasting from Kirkstall Road in Leeds. Who'd have thought that possible on the very first night? Cue the late, great Bob Monkhouse. Leeds University, of course, it's one of those dinners where everybody's in formal dress, places full of civic dignitaries. I pity the poor devils who have to make this lot laugh. Holy cow! Here comes the new boy now, viewers. Yorkshire TV's underway. 